In this episode, we'll take a look at the Bitlighter, which is a flashlight style light for video and photography. took a quick look at the Bitlighter in a couple of episodes ago where we talked about three new lights I was working with. Let's dive into a little bit more detail here with the Bitlighter. The Bitlighter looks like a big flashlight, but it's made really for video and photography, much better color rendering, and a very large battery to power it for a good long time. It is a hard light out of the box. Now, what is hard light versus soft light? I think that's very important. I think a lot of people assume that soft light is light that's less intense or has less output. That's not true. In this case, the definition of hard light is light where the transition from light to shadow is very abrupt. So there will be a very quick transition from the lit parts to the shadow parts. Soft light, on the other hand, there's a much wider transition that goes from light to shadow. This is hard out of the box, but you can soften it up. You can aim it, for example, at a reflector to soften it up. You do lose some light output intensity, but overall it makes a softer look where the transitions get a lot smoother. In terms of color quality, we'll use CRI. CRI is not perfect, I realize that, but it is one thing I have the ability to measure here with my Seikonic C700. And the Bitlighter does it respectively on both of those in the mid-90s, so definitely usable, good for skin tones. In terms of light output, here are some measurements as well on the light output. The zoom range on this is 10 to 56 degrees, so you can definitely spot it in nice and tight, which is good. But you can only go as wide as 56 degrees. That's not exactly a floodlight. But nevertheless, it's still a useful range, I think, for what I think this light is good for, which is making very dramatic lighting. The particular kit I have came with two LED heads. That's how you get different color temperatures. Mine has a 3000 Kelvin and a 5700 Kelvin, so roughly daylight and tungsten. But when you do buy it, you can choose from a variety of different color temperatures to suit your needs. It does come with this clamp for attaching the light to a stand. It has a quarter 20 and a 3 8 inch tap on the bottom. I use one of these photography speed light stands that allow you to put it on a light stand, and then you can attach the bit lighter on top of that. One huge benefit here is you do not have a fan, so there is nothing interfering with your sound when you're shooting video. Very nice. It can be powered via AC or the inbuilt lithium-ion rechargeable battery. The battery can be charged in the light itself, so you don't have to take it out. However, it is user-replaceable if you do have to replace it. So it's kind of the best of all worlds from my point of view. And this is a big battery. It lasts approximately two hours when the light is at full power. The build quality is top-notch. It feels like it's all metal. It is very sturdy. Even the dial is very nicely damped. And when you adjust the intensity of the light, it's a very smooth kind of transition as opposed to a stepped sort of transition. So you can really finesse in the exact look you want. In terms of warranty, it comes with a two-year warranty on the electronics and a one-year warranty for the charger and battery. So let's do some demos here. What I'm really interested in and where I find this most useful is for things when you want to do dramatic styles of lighting. This is not for the kind of generic kind of thing you normally see in corporate videos or very kind of bland looking lighting setups, which have their place, don't get me wrong, there's a certain kind of feel you convey when you're using those, and sometimes you want that cleaner, um, less dramatic type of look. However, when you want something that looks a little bit more dramatic to convey a certain feel for one of your projects, this can be really useful if you want that drama. So here, for example, I'm using an Aperture COB120T as the big soft light source with a light dome on it, big soft box, and then I'm also using the bit lighter to kind of punch in some light just on the face and body of the person speaking. So for talking heads, you can get a lot more drama in this kind of scenario, which is really kind of interesting and fun in some circumstances. Also very good for product shots. Again, using the soft light to kind of fill things in and then using the bit lighter to provide this specular or very kind of intense sort of light that kind of brings some drama to the shot as well. This is a hard light out of the box. However, you can soften it up. However, one other thing I should say is that a lot of people are wondering, can I use this as my main light? Well, yeah, you can. Here, for example, we're bouncing it off of a reflector to use as a key light. It does the job. You do have to increase your ISOs, probably depending on where you're at and how much ambient light there is. You may end up in the 800 to 1600 range of ISOs. So if your camera works well in that range, then this can be a viable option there as well. Obviously, it's great as a hair or a rim light. And if you want to do something much more stylized, here, for example, this could be potentially in a J.J. Abrams sci-fi piece where you have all of the light flares in the lens. We also did a flicker test just to make sure everything was good there. With some LED lights, when you dim them down, essentially what the manufacturer has done is created a pulse type of setup. And what that does is it actually turns the LED on and off very quickly 
so that it puts out less light. The problem with that is that when you're shooting video, that can create a flicker effect. So we did some testing here, and in the test that we did with our shutter angle at 11 degrees and the light dimmed down a little bit more than halfway, you can see here that we're not getting any flicker. The base kit comes in at $250. We put a link down below if you're interested in that. You can, of course, add additional color temperature LEDs if you need to do that, stands, other little accessories. You can see all of those over at the site. So get yourself a license to be a little bit more creative and try things when it makes sense. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. If you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.